now move on to GMP. Um, it says here the first night you're running on a 30, or oh, sorry, if you're building for 32 bit but you're running on a 64 bit CPU, you need to specify this variable for the configure command. Um, the next note is saying that GMP optimizes the code for the host processor. Um, and if that's incorrect or it's identifying the wrong CPU, that you need to run these two commands. But, um, in my experience, I've not, I've not found it to ever get anything wrong, but no doubt there's some probably obscure CPU it doesn't identify correctly. So we run the configure and see what it does report it's found as the CPU. I think this is a sky lake, is it? I think the CPU. Or KB Lake. Sounds about right, it's fairly recent. No doubt the tests will uncover any problems, so we can just run make. Okay, and we'll make some HTML documentation as well. And we'll run the tests now. And there's actually a caution there about the fact that it might identify the wrong processor. Um, and tests and other applications will respond with a message legal instruction. Oh yeah, that, there's the Skylake I thought I'd seen before. So it's obviously the GCC setting is Skylake, even though it's identified KB Lake. So that's probably fine. So yeah, we've got 100. All right, it actually says there's 190 tests. I wonder if that needs to be updated because we've actually reported, or it's actually reported there's 197 tests passed. So um, I'm assuming that's just a typo. Let's go just go back. They're all past. They've all passed. Those have all passed. Those have 64 there. Oh, I'm going to run out of scroll buffer again, so um, I'd say that's probably a good, a good run. There's certainly been none of these illegal instruction errors, so I, I would have thought that would have uh, thrown up loads and loads of errors, not not just the odd one or two. So let's install this package now, and install the documentation. And if we go on, I'm just going to increase the scroll. Buffer as we're losing a lot, and we do unlimited. So that's complete. Can clear that up and move on to the next package, which is MPFR. So we'll configure it. build it. And build some documentation too. And let's do some tests now as well. And 
that's passed 180 out of 180 so that's good so we can install that and install documentation and it's complete so now we do MPC First off, we configure it. Build it. And some documentation. And we'll validate the build with some tests. That's good, 67 out of 67. So we can install it and install the HTML files as well as the documentation and that's all complete so now we're doing a TTR so run the configuration command and build it and test it. Okay, only two tests, but they're both passed, that's good. Let's install and just make some post installation changes. And that's done. So ACL is the next one, and we'll do a configure first, build it, and it says regarding test that um, this run on a file system supports access controls after call utils has been built with the ACL libraries. So if desired, return to this package and run make check after call utils has been built later in this package. So we can do that. We can um, just install this for now. Make these changes here. And what I'll do is I'll retain this page and hopefully when we do core utils we can come back here rerun it, rebuild it and run the tests and reinstall it so we've got a known working system rather than this um, sorry, a package rather than this package we've just built that we haven't tested which is like an unknown unknown state really if you like so I just have to keep a, a mental note to come back here after core utils has been built Okay, so let's tidy up and we move on to shadow. There's a bit here about if you want to enforce strong passwords to go to this appropriate part of um, the BLFS book. Um, when I do BLFS, I will be rebuilding shadow anyway so it's not absolutely necessary at the moment to do that uh, we can just carry on following the Linux from scratch instructions so it says here we're going to make some changes to the groups program and its man pages so that's what these commands are all about and change the way that the encryption works and run this command if you've actually gone to the BLFS to install Cracklib as well for Shadow but we won't do that here because we're not doing that 
make a few more changes and prepare the package. And build it. And install. And now we need to configure shadow so we convert the password file and the groups to enable the shadowing. Then there's an optional bit here if you um, don't want some mailbox files to be created for every user you can run this set in so I'm going to be running that because I don't particularly want that file added each time I add a user. And then lastly we set a password for the root user. So that's done. So it's worth remembering, well yeah, definitely remember that uh, password you, you set here because this is what you'll need to log into the LFS system when you boot it up the first time. It's the um, only account you'll have um, initially, the root account. So de definitely make a note of it, don't forget it. Okay, so shadow's done. Let's tidy up and move on to GCC.